Ah, pretty good. And I said, yeah, why not? Good. And we are. And What's it again? Can you try it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll figure out uh, what, what did you get in between yeah, I saw her birthday this morning, yeah. And she can see so much. You know, I can find her. Yeah, yeah. 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 In that way. All right, Carlos, smile. <laughs> John. Yes. No, I don't like that. Hold on. Um, it could be that you have so much backlight that it doesn't need a flash. It's not flashing. Yeah, it's not flashing. No. But maybe you don't need a flash because it has so much light. Dark. Do you know what you're having? I mean it? Yeah. Carlos, do you know what you're having? Uh, I'll probably have to like pop it because I have to. Uh, okay. Alright, now look this way and smile, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Now we got it. Ah, uh, so, JT, the, the order of I'm going to say a little something. Vinny's going to say a little something. That was the part we really wanted to get. Then Cesar is going to say a little something. And then we're going to exchange rings and we're all going to sign stuff. And that transfers all your worldly possessions over to us to help pay the rent. <laughs> <laughs> That's smart. Well, you need stuff like that. Um, since service is horribly slow, shall we begin when they come over for... Sure. Yeah. First of all, Vinny and I want to thank everybody for coming today. Uh, on Wednesday, July 16, 1993, Marian Williamson randomly chose Vinny and I as prayer partners and at an HIV support group. And that night we placed our right hands on each other's chests, stared into each other's eyes, and repeated the longest prayer in humanity. And when the meeting was over, um, I left an empty auditorium and went out to an empty sidewalk. And there was Vinny standing in the middle of nothing. And I said, what are you still doing here? And he said, waiting for you. And I was, Aww. So what else could I do but invited him for cappuccino here at Cafe Raffaella. And then we came here, talked for a couple of hours, and Vinny, the uh, visitor from Hartford, Connecticut, um, I invited him back to my apartment at 96th Street in Central Park West, and we got into a taxi. Then what happened, honey? You put your arm around my shoulder, and it was really wonderful. I don't know how we had terrible sex. It was awful sex. <laughs> but, um, as bad as the sex was, we dated anyway. And over the next month, we really fell in love. And the sex got better and better. And then, um, a little over a year later, we were once again back here at Cafe Raffaella. And uh, I took this very ring. And I got down on one knee in the room right over there. And that was in the very early days of, of gay marriage. Um, so it was really an odd thing, but it was important because I wanted people to know that this wasn't just my boyfriend, du jour, or current roommate, but that we had a deep commitment. So I got down on one knee. Then what happened, Benny? When you started to cry. Yes, and people the whole, the whole restaurant stood in the floor. And what were you saying? Get up, get up, get up. <laughs> I was waiting for a yes, but he kept saying, get up. Then uh, he did say yes. He did? He did. He did. Uh, but there was a caveat. If we were going to have a big wedding, as we did for 125 people, we had to afford it. So we had to start saving like $1,000 a month for a year. 
so that we had enough money. And Vinny was a saver. I never believed in that thing, but I would never have been able to afford it. Um, along the way, we had some hiccups. That year, Vinny came down with PCP pneumonia, the same day my mother passed away. Um, when Vinny got better, we had our ill-fated book tour. And, um, but in that spring, we went to Strawberry Fields in Central Park, and we were sitting down to saying, what does marriage mean, especially a gay marriage? And we wrote our Ketuba, and we borrowed a little from the Quaker faith, where we were not so much married under the authority of a church or a clergy person or a government, but under the care of our friends who were the true shepherds in our union. And here was our ketubah from that day, and the vows signed, uh, witnessed by Rabbi Lippman, who is the, coincidentally, the previous chaplain at Jacob Perlow Hospice, and all the wedding guests signed all the way around. And then, one thing I wanted to say before turning things over to the current chaplain, Jacob Perlow, Cesar, is that asking Vinny to marry me almost 10 years ago was one of the best and smartest things I ever did. Um, it's absolutely helped me to <laughs> be a more loving person, a better person, and my time with Vinny is the most important thing I've done in my life. Thank you for your love. It hasn't always been easy, but it's a privilege and honor to be your husband and everlasting life. And with that introduction, Cesar. Not yet, not yet. <laughs> it's okay. Well, first of all, you know, uh, I think it is really a privilege for me and to be an honor to be part of this and not to be part of your life. So I remember when I came on board uh, on this current job at Jacob Perla, I came on board in February. And I was getting bored because I was not getting any referrals. So one morning what I did was to sit in front of this rack with all the patients' names. And I started jotting names because I was getting bored. And I came upon the award Ali Grooming. And I made contacts since then. But uh, at that time, I think Benny was not ready for my presence. And that's understandably so. I just wanted to make myself known that I want to be counselor, pastor counselor, so take a further counselor. And I'm just happy that uh, I think last month or two months ago, Karen Dalton, the social worker, said that uh, I'm welcome to come. There's authorization of come. So that's the beginning of the current uh, relationship with both of you, with Greg, and now you people around me. It's privilege for me because uh, it's rare in my Christian to be part of such a wonderful union and celebration. You know, you know my Catholic tradition is quite rigid. I'm not rigid. It's very, and no one should report me to the Pope, okay? We already have the Pope's blessing. So, and, so it's just a, a, a rare privilege for me to witness this ceremony. And last week when I was with uh, Mara, uh, I saw really that the importance of their relationship, especially having spoken with Vinny the previous week, and how the hospitalization of Mark would be affected in you know, both ways. So I thought the insight just came to me that why don't we do a renewal of your vows, which I didn't mention to Vinny, because the insight came to me when I was with Mark. For Mark, without any hesitation, let's do it. It's about we have please tell Vinny that I suggested it or which it is. Switch is once we have started some of the you you want water? Um well, wait a moment and then we'll order. Yeah. Sure. Okay, just um let me okay. Know yeah, okay. So that's what happened, you know, when I suggested that and Mark jumped on it. And uh, I just realized and, 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 and sense that uh, the renewal is out of the stage because we really don't know the future of it. And in my practice uh, of 
leading a congregation every June in the congregation where I live in New Zealand. I will ask all those couples in the congregation to stand up every June because you know the June bride thing. Oh. And every year they marry. It's not June, but it's still appropriate to do that. And that's the purpose of our gathering here. To renew that commitment that you have for each other. And also the friendship that you have formed all these years. You're so far away. And I think the, the tribal is the honor Amen. Hi, uh, Let me just bless the thing again. I ask that blessing upon this way, symbol of love and unity between Mark and Ben. I pray that this ring of Mary symbolized their love that will be eternal, that their love will be eternal. From now on, with this ring, I reaffirm that you are my husband in everlasting love. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get my wedding ring. With this ring, I reaffirm our wedding. And now, we have a reaffirmation, Thursday, November 13, 2003, as we reaffirm the sacred bond of marriage, we renew our wedding vows and pledge to do whatever it takes to celebrate life together, to live to the fullest in the present moment. We shall strive to be brave when facing life's challenges together. We will laugh and love and hold each other often. Uh, we will do whatever it takes to help each other to be healthy and to grow along our unique paths. We promise to always be supportive of one another with gentleness and with love and communicate honestly and openly no matter what. We will create a wonderful home together that can be an oasis filled with serenity, happiness and love. And most of all, we will cherish this never-ending love for one another, and for our family, and for our friends. And I sign it, Mark the Solid Price, Husband and Everlasting Love. We wanted to say thank you to all of you for being our good friends and to you as our 
for helping us out. So in the spirit of Raffaella, we were promoting the competition. So is here it? is what is the competition? Starbucks. <laughs> oh, you're too far. You have a twenty dollar gift card oh. for for Starbucks. Oh, and you can set it up, Gregory, for order debit. So you, can, so you always have coffee for you and a friend in your pocket. You go to the cash register, you have any Starbucks. It's a credit card with on the back. And it is $20 in it. And what, what we've done is you can also set it up for auto recharge, which means that takes it. Okay, is that the date, December 1st? No, uh, I'm available. Okay, any any day is fine for me as long as it's like around lunchtime. Lunchtime. Mm -hmm. Maybe 12? 12 is fine. Uh -huh. I mean, I can go to lunch anytime from no, no, whenever no, no, to whatever, no. you know. 12, uh, Do we have any videos of you? Because I have a uh, separate process process are, are checked. Okay, thank you so much. But thank you so much. Thank you. You're in there, huh?